Hi, everybody. So I have a special guest today. Her name is Dana. And we've been on before together a few times. But we're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about over the last two days. And basically, all of that, let's reach out to the ETs for assistance, was sparked from a conversation that Dana and I had. So it was very early in the morning. <laughs> And she and I were talking and trying to figure out why were things taking so long? And I, I received that there had been a lot of um, discourse, like the white hats at the top have not been always agreeing on things and the way things should go, but also that they were spread very thin and they felt like it was their turn to really do this on their own. And this is the big thing that they've really been looking towards that has been their job because they've gotten assistance with underground and tech as well. I feel like they've gotten a lot of tech assistance, but this was their job and they were going to pull it off. But there's been many times that it did not get pulled off because something has come up and gotten in the way. So something has gummed up the process. So all the dominoes that they've set up to fall have stopped at the beginning or after two or three dominoes have fallen. So they've been having a really hard time and there's some pride there that's been not letting them reach out for assistance. But humanity is now reaching out for assistance. And we've also asked that they see the big picture and that the delays are actually beginning to hurt humanity at this point a little bit. I do feel that we're back on track. It feels like we are. However, they need to make sure that they ask for help so that they can stay on track because we can't wait any longer. And I just want to say that we really do appreciate everything that they've done. They've lost a lot of people. They've had a very hard time, but they really can accept help from friends. So we're going to talk about what the ETs actually are like who are they who are the ets here for us and dana's gonna kind of address that a little bit for us today well ets are <clears throat> ets that are now close to us are our friendly neighbors they are not any more exotic than okay for me maybe for average person they are a bit of an exotic sorry i got a lash on my eye anyway <laughs> But just think about it. Think about it like this. The people who are watching this video probably have been ETs at one point. Mm -hmm. We all have our soul families and part of those families are ETs. Um, each of us have ETs who are kind of a looking after us at this moment. There are ETs... Um, Honey said the other day that the sky is basically a parking lot. And that is true. Because, you know, some of us have seen some of this stuff that is going on, you know, upstairs. And it is true. Lyrans are very close. Uh, the Federation uh, is very close. Their numbers have been increased tremendously. Uh, the Cedars have been on the outskirts for quite a while already and they are even you know having the backs of the federation now <clears throat> the ETs are just another race another race of people they might come in different colors and different sizes and different looks but they are not any more exotic than say you you meet a tourist that comes up to you and talks to you and asks for direction. 
the the person might be from another city, might be from another country. They might have curly hair, straight hair, and uh, they might have different colored eyes, but they are people, just like the ETs are people. And um, the ETs really need us to ask for their assistance in order for them to help. Um, now, there's this uh, kind of a intergalactic law that the ETs cannot meddle with the business of humans unless they are being invited to and asked for, you know, for the assistance. And they really want to help. The ones who can um, actually meddle with the business of humans are other humans. Now, a lot of, you know, these planet's problems are because people have been meddling with the business of other humans. They had no business in meddling with. And uh, also the minority of the people have made pacts with the nebul, with the negative ETs. And um, that is why the Federation uh, ex experience that they have, and they do, I'm being corrected, thank you. <laughs> And they have the right to come and remove the negative ETs from the planet. The subject is quite large, actually. Maybe you want to frame this up a little, honey. Yeah, so the grays are gone. Very much. Um, yeah, the archons are gone. Yeah. And the reptilians are gone. Mm -hmm. So... All of the negative ETs have been removed, but we still, we have the benevolent positive ETs here to help. And part of the reason that we're in this predicament in the first place is that the planet had to be saved at one point from all the warring that was going on. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll have to go back to the hidden history episodes, but basically the reason that we're in this prison is because they had to save the planet and we wouldn't have a home at all if they hadn't put up the dome so it all goes back to that but then the dome was taken over by the negative ets a little over 200 years ago so that has created just a massive mess and we it's they've done their best and their part to clean it up but they can do more if we allow it and a lot of us are ets incarnated in human bodies right now so feeling like they are you know so amazing and so fabulous and they know better isn't really appropriate for what we're doing it's not appropriate because basically we're equal. We're on equal playing ground. We're just in a different kind of body. Yeah, and that's one of the things why actually <clears throat> I'm in contact. Sorry. I'm <laughs> I'm doing that all day long. <laughs> anyway, uh, my, I'm in contact with, with an ET. He's a member of the Federation, and uh, I'm in contact with him through a chip that was installed in me. And that's been tuned to a military frequency. So uh, I'm kind of a watch over constantly. And it, it's been it's been a blessing, blessing these days, let's put it this way. Now, he contacted me today because um, he wanted to address something. Uh, there are why a few people who find it hard to contact their ETs and they don't know which ones they are going to call for and how am I going to go about this? And he really was worried about something, you know, energy-wise, because they read energy, was that um, people have been programmed to look up to, up to celebrities, up to religious figures, up to saints, up, you know, to look up to others and he said that the last thing they want is to be looked up like they are gods like they are saviors or anything 
they, they, you know, he wanted me to come here and tell you that each and every human being is on the same level. We have nobody that is above us or below us. And the same goes with ETs. You take ET person X and a human person Y. Your value is equal with each other. No other person is above you or below you. So when you ask for help, imagine how would you ask help from your neighbor? How would you ask help from your cousin? Just imagine that. It's, it's just as simple. They don't, they are not any more miraculous as we are. They have lived longer. Like I, I told Honey, I, it must have been yesterday. Like when, I, when I'm in talks with him, what happens really is he sends me blocks of energy, which I translate to words. It's very rare occasion that he gives me words as per words. But every time I'm, I'm in contact with him, I, I already told Honey, I kind of feel a little bratty every time <laughs> because, you know, they've lived for such a long time. And, and like, you know, he is very stoic and very, I mean, he's funny too. He's, but he's very stoic and very kind of elegant in his mannerism. And so they've lived a long time. They have not lived in a planet that is this programmed. They've not been, their train of thinking has not been poisoned. Their water is not being poisoned. The air they breathe is actually healthy. The food they eat is not being poisoned. So we are talking about a a whole other race that has grown and lived in a completely different environment in comparison to ours. And that is somehow the goal of humanity that they actually do want us to develop to because we are still in development. This is why the ETs cannot directly come here and kind of take over and help us. We have to ask for them. We need to invite them. Mm -hmm. So we are equal. They are not, you know, it, it's not like, you know, they are not higher than us. We are not. There is no such thing. Our values are equal always. They are not any, any, uh, anyone to worship, anyone. So we were just talking about, this is our value, this is their value. We are all equal. We just have experienced something completely different. And when you reach out to your people, he's now telling me to get to the point, <laughs> so I will. So what I do is I always clear my ego. You, I'm sure you can find in Honey's uh, page uh, that there must be links how to clear your ego and how to protect yourself. Always clear your ego and protect yourself. And then I go into this meditative space. I don't always even have to go to the meditative space. If I need to know something, I, I can feel him and hear him uh, telling me stuff. But if I have a question, I will go and see if he's available. Like today, he, he told me something, like there are two things to do of certain thing. And he told me the first thing would be good. And then he was, oh, I got to go by. I was like, the guy left me hanging here. <laughs> but then after a couple of hours, he came back and he, he told me what, what's the other thing that needed to be done. So because, you know, they are like humans. But you don't have to have a chip. It doesn't take a special person to be chipped, you know, and tuned into military frequencies. Everybody has energy bodies and everybody has their soul family. So just go into meditation and reach out to your higher self. To I always speak to my archangel and the angels around because the angels have, it's like we have armies of lovers on our, you know, available to us these days and ask for the angels. There are millions of unemployed angels these days. Ask them to reach out to your to your ETs. They will. They'll be happy to. They want humans to succeed as well. And talk to your guides and just talk to, you know, just 
think about, you know, whatever ET connection I have or I had, just please know that, you know, I wish that you would help humanity. You can even address, you know, the Federation of the Worlds. Because yeah. those are the those are the right people to even if you don't feel like there's a connection, you have to put out the intention. You don't have to see it. When you feel it, it's there. Because what we see is only physical. It's still in the very much in the 3D what we can see usually on the planet. There are people who can see colors and energies, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't have to trust in these physical experiences that you have a contact now there's an et in your living room what do i do that probably never going to happen not i mean not this year maybe in coming years yeah but but just you know feel the connection and ask for the help for humanity you don't have to address it to a kind of a special person special person you know a special race a special but if you can, you can even go further if you feel comfortable about the situation and imagine how how can you see yourself, you know, when you've been 80? Because I bet, you know, the person that is watching this video has had several lives as an ET. And just start to imagine what feels natural to you. Yeah. Because, you know, it's it's usually, it's not just one life you know, one lifetime as an ET. I know, just, you know, to put it shortly, as, you know, for example, I know I've been an Arcturian. I know I've been, uh, I remember three lifetimes in Sirius. Uh, twice I was an aquatic in Sirius. I've been in Lyra. Uh, I mean, that's, but this is no different to anyone else. I mean, everybody has these experiences. Mm -hmm. It's just that your memories haven't yet being returned to you but as as yeah. the planet rises its frequency you will receive these memories as well exactly mm. exactly so we just have to remember that we're the ones who chose to come in and be incarnated and they're out there to assist like they've been watching over us our soul tribe so you could say I'll only talk to whoever is in my highest good. And I'm asking for my soul tribe to assist. Mm. And we would like you to assist now. And also another thing I'm asking, you know, just the collective is to let go of the fear of what are they going to think of us if we have to ask for help or and this is addressed to a certain alliance. <laughs> um, you're allowed to ask for help. You've been fighting for a thousand years. So commendable. Yeah. It's amazing what you've accomplished. It's amazing. And it's been really, really hard. We know it's been really, really hard. And we're grateful that um, so many of us have been saved from having to experience it, but we're also here to help and we want to do that right now. So, and we know that also as this all unfolds, so many of us will be gathering together and assisting with humanitarian projects with, you know, discussions, with telling people what's real and true, all of that is going to start to happen on a massive scale from the people who came in to assist. So, but we all matter in exactly the same way. We all have a divine spark. The only ones that didn't have a divine spark were the robotic grays and archons. Even the reptilians had a spark, but their brains were taken over. Mm -hmm. So just kind of think about that and think about how you would like to go about it. And maybe you don't want to ask, but we're asking right now, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and if you want to ask, then just do so. Um, 
Should I talk about how to clear the ego and do that stuff? I think that would be helpful. And yeah. also I was given right now that uh, it would give hope to people to tell a little bit of something I've seen and what I know, what is, you know, going on in the parking lot. But okay. I think, you know, the ego clearing could be maybe, maybe you do that first. Okay. So if you want to clear your ego, imagine your vessel as basically an empty cup. Okay. And then you're going to fill it up with pure consciousness, which is this beautiful white sparkly light. Okay. So you're just going to fill it up. You're going to fill up your head from all the way from your feet, all the way up your body to the top of your head. And then you're going to reach in and you're going to pull all of that pure consciousness out and throw it into the sun. And that's going to take the ego with it. And then you're going to fill yourself up with pure, unconditional love. And that's kind of the color of this painting behind me. Very sparkly and pink. And you're going to fill yourself up. You're going to cap yourself off. And you're going to expand that pink into a bubble that's about 12 feet around you. And then you can put a green bubble around that for protection. And if you want, you can put a force field around that that doesn't let anything in. And then you can speak whatever you want to say. Because you're not allowing any energy that is not yours to enter. So I think that will help people. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm getting direct messages, so I'll talk about the parking lot in a couple of minutes. Um, okay. <laughs> he's telling me, we are here to help. We came here to clean your planet. We are now here to help and assist you in ascension. The timeline is very crucial. People need to know the truth before, before next spring and people will need to have time to adjust to a new way of thinking. And we cannot wait any longer. We acknowledge the, the work that is done so far but we are more than ready and willing to assist in every endeavor. He's also, he's saying also, I have to be very careful what I say because my boss is watching. <laughs> so uh, he wants to be very kind and diplomatic. He always is, but he's giving me these, you know, blocks of energy very carefully. And he's saying, don't hesitate to ask for our help we cannot enter into your planet without you inviting us without you asking us and even so we have to come he's showing me the hands of of humans we have to work through you know other people because the planet is still developing and they cannot directly come here so they really want to help but they they do so by joining in with the alliance and they have been joining but they would like even you know even more so because he's saying we have we have a workforce to mm -hmm. to assist with the ascension and basically the timeline is he's showing me a window and it's getting more and more narrow all the time and he's saying we we need to get this job and uh he's he's just telling me to to say them keep asking yeah don't don't ever stop asking keep asking we have to, we have to do this and we have to do this together and and he's saying you know what you you know what is you know there in the future for the planet is something extraordinary 
now he's telling me now is the right time to tell about the parking lot because you know he thinks I, I believe he's right um that it would give people hope so uh there are quite a, there was how many months ago was it a couple of months ago something happened and um uh, because of my, you know, situation with the chip and stuff, I hear them, you know, when when the fleets are going, going around. And there's an arc somewhere very close to where I'm living. <clears throat> but this, uh, it lasted about one and a half days. And I understood a, a lot more in number of, uh, of aircrafts came here. And they were positioned quite densely. So at this moment, there are quite a bit of, you know, uh, aircrafts of the Federation about. And not only them, there's a lot of motherships as well, you know, mm -hmm. on the planets, on the surface of planets. And some of these motherships are very different because some of these motherships have scientists. And uh, what I've seen is a lot of them are insectoid. Not all insectoids are bad and evil. Insectoids are a very intelligible race. And those who've been working together with Nebu, of course, you know, those are infected in a way. And uh, But I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about a very clever group of scientists that have worked on behalf of humanity for quite a long time already. And they are not bound by this intergalactic law that another planet is not allowed to meddle with the business of another planet if the other planet is in a develop developing kind of a situation like our planet now is. Mm -hmm. They are not bound by that. They are not part of this you know, intergalactic treaty, if you will. They are working separately and independently. What they have been doing is um, they hold a lot of DNA from different races. And what they have been doing to humanity, what is important, they've been picking up people who have been chipped by the negative ones. And they have removed these chips. And they, if sometimes, you know, they insert the chips very deep in the brain. And in order for them to get out, actually, some of the brain, you know, matter would get damaged, so they can't be taken out. In that case, they have neutralized these transmitters and these mm -hmm. chips. So they've been doing that, you know, on behalf of humanity without asking permission from any, any you know, outside source, etc. And they've been kind of a clearing humanity a great deal like this. They've been taking out uh, transmitters transmitters even and kind of a tracking devices mm -hmm. but they've been very busy you know clearing the consciousness of humanity by neutralizing chips that they cannot remove and removing the chips from people that can be removed i mean i'm talking about the chips that are, that were inserted by the nebul by the negatives and um they've been working behind the curtains all along and they have been part of this uh, i'm giving the word genetic programming because human race was kind of a taken back in development for such a long, long time so to balance the order they have taken dna from from hybrid people and hybrid races and they have kind of a Terry picked different kinds of abilities to people and they have taken I myself am I'm one of those people I have given my permission before I was born into this body that they can take uh, x number of my eggs and they have used these eggs to create a new human race and the abilities that I was told what they wanted to harness from me was the creativity, uh, psychic abilities, et cetera, et cetera. Because, you know, I have a lot of ET DNA in me, amongst with other things. But, you know, that is, you know, with every people 
has these different DNA strands within us. And um, to have them activated feels quite liberating. Mm -hmm. But this is why they have, you know, on the mothership, they are working on behalf of humanity by removing these devices programmed from outside and inserted from outside with different kinds of methodology that has been inserted in our bodies. They've been taking it out one by one every single day. That's not, you know, talked about very often. And that is because they've wanted to kind of a operate on a quite in a low, low profile. But uh, now I'm being told whatever can kind of lift up the spirits and the consciousness of humanity. Now I'm being told, tell them. <laughs> so they not tell them. So there are, there are different kinds of ET races. And some of them look freaky as you could imagine. But they are working actively on behalf of humanity. So don't feel afraid or diminished to ask because really these guys want to help us so so don't don't think i'm just a person i'm just a one person i i have no i don't know even how this thing works i'm sure it would have no bearing you know to the issue never undermine yourself your asking can have an enormous effect imagine when 10 of us are asking the same thing Hundred or even thousand, hundred thousand. That's going to create basically miracles, and that is exactly what is needed now for the humanity. So yeah, there's a lot of different, different spaceships are uh, parked over there on the on the parking lot. Mm -hmm. But then there are motherships that have extraordinary things, and some of these motherships are actually housing the most advanced scientists known to to the universe and in a way when you think about this i i've seen some of these places and some of these people just think about um how privileged we are really and uh, that kind of a makes you feel all kinds of fuzzy inside when i think about it and this is something I also, on my part, I wanted to, to kind of a tell, tell forward to, to others who haven't had the beautiful experience of seeing these kinds of places. Yeah. Mm. That's beautiful. Yes. And they are there. I get that they they're are. there for sure. And the arcs are there and all, I mean, some of the ships in the sky that we can't see are just unbelievably big. So there's fleets of ships up there. And it's just a matter of reaching out and I don't want to pressure anybody either, but that's what we're doing today is explaining the two videos that I put up over the last two days to kind of give you guys an idea of the importance of it. And also, you know, we are going to have this immense amount of light codes come in, in the spring. So basically at the end of March, and we just want to give people a chance to experience as much time as possible so that they can go through their mourning period, their realization that society is not what they thought it was, and that they can go ahead and start to heal before all of those upgrades come into their body because it's going to help them get through it so much easier. And that's the main purpose. And I know I woke up in the middle of the night last night worrying that something was going on. And then this morning I find out that some ego has gotten in, in the way of some of these things happening. And this isn't the time for ego right now. That's not the time. 
it's a time to do everything that we can for humanity on the largest scale. Yeah. So this was good, I think. You have anything left? Yeah. Does he have anything left to say? I'll ask him. Yeah. He's doing what he always says, you know, he used to say over and out. Now he does this, we salute you. <laughs> so, yeah. Beautiful. Well, tell him thank you. And we really appreciate his input. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's it. We just wanted to share everything with you guys and let you know where things are at. And I know the white hats are working tirelessly right now, but um, they can have more and more assistance. Mm -hmm. So, and the assistance is very willing to come forward. Yeah. When they are asked. Exactly. So I know that my soul tribe has answered the call. So that's kind of coming in. And also something else he's saying, actually, it's like hmm. his state in the background. He's saying, ask for your spirit family to ask for help as well. He's giving me groups of, uh, like there's groups of guides, groups of angels, groups of different dimensions. So when all of these groups come together and ask as well, it will actually multiply the energies mm -hmm. from different dimensions. He just showed me this. I wish I could say in words what I'm seeing right now, but it's like in all levels, the energies are gathering round. It's I'm, I'm having chills down, you know, even on my cheeks. Mm -hmm. But it's quite beautiful. He's asking yeah. for, for, you know, for us to speak to our soul families, to our guides and Okay, now he says, so our guide group can vary, you know, throughout our lives. Mm -hmm. I remember for the longest time, uh, the leader of my guide group was a Native American, a very old, ancient man. And then at some point, my, the leader of my guide group was a lion. He was a man, but he came in the form of a lion, dressed in a suit. And um, so these uh, guide groups, they, they change. Mm -hmm. It's like the population changes and the leader changes depending on who is the boss. But just try and ask when you, when you talk to your guides, ask for who, who is the kind of a head honcho here, who's the leader. Ask them to show themselves to you and ask him or her to talk to the rest of the soul group. And you can even, you know, do the guides. You can do it yourselves even. But it's something I was shown kind of like a hierarchy in, in the guide group is that the bossy pants is like, you know, in the angel group, the archangel is the one who mm -hmm. gives orders or who gives guidance is more accurate word, gives guidance to the rest of the, you know, the group. And then ask them to ask other guides, other angels, other ETs, you know, to come and help. Because, you know, and also now actually in the Federation, there are many kinds of different races. Um, my contactee, I'm allowed to say he's Palladian. And most of the people, actually many of the people are Palladian, but there are, you know, people from other, other planets as well. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, peeps from Venus and, you know, he said, don't get, you know, the list is long. But the thing is, we have so many ET races here and we have soul family in our soul families. We have so many different ET races that it, when we ask for them to ask other ET races, that that energy is going to be enormous. Yeah. It's like a multi-layer and multi-dimensional. If we think about, I'm not talking about densities now. I'm talking about dimensions. Mm -hmm. Consciousness. Because we're not alone here. 
This world doesn't stand alone, separate from others. Everything is connected to everything. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. It's kind of like the painting, actually. Yeah. So if you look at that, your soul tribe is in the middle. This is the flower of life. And I painted it, so it's not correct exactly like dimensional wise but um the soul tribe would be in the middle and this is all the connections that go on in your life so we're connected to everything in that kind of geometry yeah so don't be afraid to ask yeah they're your friends they are your family mm -hmm. they are your they they are our neighbors you wouldn't yeah. hesitate to ask, you know, help from your cousin or your neighbor. Well, that depends what kind of a neighbor you have, yeah. obviously. Uh, but like? these are the good kinds of neighbors. These are the kinds of neighbors you actually want to have. So don't hesitate. They are there. They want to help us. They do. But they need our invitation to the helping. Yep. And it's also, I think this is a wonderful example and time when it comes to sovereignty. 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 Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> of, of humanity. You're welcome. <laughs> I salute you. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> think about this is a time humanity is taking up, you know, kind of a let's let's take our destiny by the, you know, where. And and go with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is part of the lesson, maybe. We're not staying mum anymore. We're not waiting for others to do anything. We have to take our independence. And this is us taking the independence and exactly. standing on our two, two feet and making the decision. It's uh, now is the time we ask help from these guys. It's time, you know, we, we can't stay still anymore. No. And we're getting it's irritated gonna, by standing. Yeah, still. and it's and, and it's yeah. getting to cost lives. And I don't I don't want that. I mean, imagine, I mean, so much job, so much work has been done to raise the consciousness of humanity. If we stall a little bit, bit longer, that's only gonna take the progress, you know, backwards. We don't want to kind of go back. We need to push through. This is kind of a, like a test to humanity. Mm -hmm. Can we go to the other side? Or is it going to be too harsh? And, you know, people are going to be upset. Are we going to stay silent and pretend, you know, the situation goes away? It doesn't go away. We have to protect the people that wouldn't make it. And that is by pushing through this barrier. Yeah. Yep. We're the warriors right now. Yeah, we are. And mm -hmm. so. Yep. We can do this. We can. Yeah. Let's get to it. Definitely. Okay. Thanks everybody for watching. And Bye. I'm glad that we got to do this. Thank you, Dana. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.